and welcome. Today is a special episode released a day early for International Women's Day. And today I wanna to take you across London, looking at all of the statues of women and sharing some of their stories. I'm Katie, a London blue badge tourist guide, and I run public walks, private tours, and virtual tours all across the city. So today, to narrow it down, I'm focusing in on public, freestanding sculptures or busts that depict non-royal named historical women. Across the whole of the UK, according to the Public Monuments and Statues Association, there are 925 statues, although this was only last updated in 2002. Only 25 are non-royal historical women, so no queens or allegorical figures. So that's not really that many, especially when we consider that 43 statues across the UK are of men named John. So what about London specifically? Now I've counted 19 and these are the ones that I'm going to talk about today, but if I've missed any or there are other little things you'd like to add, please do let me know in the comments. I've also included a map in the description so you can find all of these and have a look for yourself. So let's jump in and explore some of the stories of these inspiring women and I've chosen to look at them in roughly chronological order. Our first woman is undeniably a powerful figure and here she is, right opposite Parliament, the seat of the country's political power. Boudicca or Boadicea was born around 30 AD. She was a native Briton and she led a revolt against the Romans who had invaded what they called Britannia. Now, although she was ultimately unsuccessful, the scale of devastation that she unleashed on London can still be seen in the geology of the city. There's a burnt layer in the very fabric if you dig down far enough. In Paddington, you can come across another woman that you certainly wouldn't want to cross, or at least when she was in her most famous role as Lady Macbeth. Sarah Siddons was born in 1755. She was an actress, and not only that, really a true celebrity. In 1812, she gave an extraordinary farewell performance in Macbeth, and when her character had had their final scene, despite not being the official end, the play finished right there and then. She gave an emotional speech to the crowd, who were all on their feet. And her statue, which has recently been restored, gives us a sense of just how captivating she would have been. The most recent statue that appears on our list has been quite controversial. Mary Wollstonecraft was born in 1759, a writer she's best known for a vindication of the rights of women, seen as one of the earliest feminist works which challenges the contemporary notions that women existed only to please men. It championed women's independence and the need for a national education system. So when the statue was unveiled, not everyone was happy. From this silver mass, a figure of a woman emerges. And on the base of the inscription, I do not wish women to have power over men, but over themselves. So let me know in the comments what you think about the sculpture, whether you absolutely love it or you hate it. But next we're moving on to another Mary, this time Mary Seacole, and she was born in Jamaica in 1805. And although she wasn't a trained nurse, Mary is remembered for her bold and brave decision to go and help soldiers who were serving in the Crimean War. And this was despite the War Office turning down her application. She decided to establish the British Hotel and aid soldiers with food with cleanliness and to help them recuperate. She was hugely loved by the people that she looked after and this statue of her was erected in 2016. And it's worth paying attention to the circular disc behind her because this is a cast from the ground where she worked in Crimea. Now, often seen as a rival to Mary Seacole, despite the pair never actually meeting, this is Florence Nightingale. 
better known as the Lady with the Lamp. Florence was born in 1820 and she completely broke the mould of what was considered a typical Victorian woman. She never married and she chose instead to dedicate herself to nursing. During the Crimean War, she formed a team of nurses that she had trained and ran a hospital at Scutari, present day Istanbul. She was shocked that many more soldiers were dying from unhygienic conditions and illnesses rather than the actual fighting. But she radically changed the way things work, which meant that more soldiers survived. She's seen as the founder of modern nursing and her statue close to Piccadilly Circus shows her with her lamp, this enduring image which came from a report in the Times newspaper. It described her walking past and tending to the soldiers in bed, lit just by the light of her little oil lamp. We're now heading east and we're going to meet Catherine Booth on the Mile End Road. Catherine was born in 1829 and she stands opposite her probably more famous husband, William. The pair worked together in forming the Salvation Army and Catherine, defying conventional behaviour at the time, would regularly preach in church and on the streets of Whitechapel. You may know you can actually find exact copies of these two statues in Dulwich. Now in 2018, to commemorate a hundred years since some women got the vote, the first ever statue of a woman was erected in Parliament Square. This was Dame Millicent Garrett Fawcett. She was a suffragist who believed passionately in universal suffrage, but who didn't approve of violent tactics. The base of the sculpture contains photographs of her fellow campaigners and the flower beds are planted in red, white and green, the colours of the suffragist campaign. On the other side of the campaign, we have the suffragettes. Emmeline Pankhurst was born in 1858. She was the leader of the Women's Social and Political Union, who believed in deeds, not words, and that for anything to change, they would have to resort to violence. There are two interesting details on the statue. First, an image of Emmeline's daughter and fellow campaigner Christabel, as well as on the left-hand side, a Holloway brooch, Holloway was the female-only prison where many campaigners were jailed following protests and the brooch contains the portcullis, which is the symbol of Parliament. These were given to suffragettes after they were released from prison as a badge of honour. About a 10-15 minute walk from here, you get to Trafalgar Square and just off it is the statue of Edith Cavill. Edith worked as a nurse in occupied Belgium during the First World War. Although she was English, she helped soldiers on both sides. And in 1915, she was arrested after helping 200 Allied soldiers escape. Despite international protest, she was shot by firing squad. And I always find it quite moving that on her monument, it actually refers to the time of her death, dawn. Carved on the monument are the words that she shared the night before her execution. Patriotism is not enough. I must have no hatred or bitterness towards anyone. We've already heard about a number of nurses and continuing this medical theme. If you go to Tavistock Square, you'll find a small bust of Louisa Aldrich Blake and she was the first woman to qualify as a surgeon in the UK and was a pioneer in her field. Born in Essex in 1865, during the First World War, she led a team of women to establish a hospital in France. She was Dean of the London School of Medicine for Women, now part of UCL, and while there, she almost doubled the intake of students. At the opposite side of Tavistock Square, we have another bust, this time for the writer, Virginia Woolf. She was a born and bred Londoner and the most famous member of the Bloomsbury group, so it's fitting that we find her bust here. She actually lived at 52 Tavistock Square for 15 years, and it was here that she conceived and wrote Mrs Dalloway and A Room of One's Own. One of my favourite collections of sculptures in London is this one called Dr Salter's Daydream. 
It's actually featured in another YouTube video, so you can watch it to get the full story. But today our focus is just about Ada. She was one of the first female councillors in London and the first woman to become a mayor in London. While at the helm of Bermondsey, an overcrowded and impoverished area of London in the early 1900s, she launched a programme of beautification, planting 9,000 trees. Now, this might sound frivolous, but she really believed that living by green space was a right and not just a privilege. Now, in a lovely green space, actually London's largest public square, Lincoln's Inn Fields, we find another memorial. This is Margaret Ethel MacDonald. And she's shown here as this caring, motherly figure. And she did indeed have a happy marriage and six children. But she was also a feminist, another social reformer, and she campaigned for the need for women to get education and training in skilled work. And she helped set up the first trade school for girls in the early 1900s. A more unusual memorial can be found just by Leicester Square, and it shows Agatha Christie, the great crime novelist. And fittingly, it shows her in a book. It has details of Christie's much-loved titles. The statue is also close to St Martin's Theatre, where you can find The Mousetrap, the world's longest-running play based on her novel, which opened in the West End in 1952. Back in Bloomsbury, you can find this bust of Noor Inayat Khan in Gordon Square. And Noor's story is one of the most inspiring and heartbreaking that we're talking about today. She was born in Moscow in 1914 to Indian parents, and her family came to London following the outbreak of the First World War. At the outbreak of the Second World War, Noor joined the Women's Auxiliary Forces and because she spoke fluent French and she was hardworking, determined and intelligent, she was soon recruited as a spy for the SOE, or Special Operations Executive. She became the first female wireless operator to be sent into Nazi-occupied France, and she worked from Paris, one of the most dangerous cities to be based at the time. For three months after other SOE colleagues were captured or killed, she was the only link between London and Paris. Now, eventually she was betrayed and taken to Dachau concentration camp. She was interrogated and abused, but she didn't give up any information. On the 13th of September, 1944, she was shot and she was only 30 years old. Another SOE operative can be found along the banks of the Thames opposite the Houses of Parliament. Violet Sabo was born in Paris and after her husband was killed during a battle in North Africa in 1942, she was also recruited and trained as a field agent. For her second mission, she was parachuted into France with the aim of sabotaging German communication lines. Working with her colleague Jacques Dufour, their car was stopped by the Gestapo and while fleeing, Violet fell, she twisted her ankle but she refused to force help, giving him time to escape while she became locked in open fire with their pursuers. Violet was captured and taken to Ravensbrück concentration camp. On the morning of the 5th of February, 1945, Violet with two other female SOE agents was shot. She was 23 and along with Norm, she received the George Cross for bravery. In 2009, she was chosen as the face for this statue, representing all SOE agents. Now for a slightly happier story, we're heading east to Stratford. And this statue is of Joan Littlewood, who's known as the mother of modern theatre. With her young and edgy theatre company, Theatre Workshop, she revived Stratford's Theatre Royal. She even lived and slept in the theatre while it was being restored in the 1950s. Her production of Oh What a Lovely War, a satirical musical of the First World War, made history as she was the first woman to be nominated for a Tony Award in the category Best Direction of a Musical. Her statue is outside the Theatre Royal Stratford East, 
and I love her casually optimistic outlook, even when sat amongst a pile of rubble. Our final two statues celebrate women who have shaped fashion and music. Along a Mayfair side street, Auden Place, you'll find two sculptures engaged in a photo shoot. It represents Terence Donovan, who had his studio here, photographing the model Twiggy. Born in 1949 as Leslie Lawson, she became the iconic face of London in the swinging 60s. And finally in Camden Market, you can find a statue of the singer and songwriter Amy Winehouse. Unveiled in 2014, Amy lived in Camden and her last public appearance was at the nearby Camden's Roundhouse, just three days before her tragic death. I hope today that you've learnt about some new, inspiring women from London's past and more recent history. Remember, you can subscribe here and do let me know in the comments if you've passed any other sculptures of women that I've missed. I'll see you next week for more of London's hidden history.